This is Billy Moffat with the Gale Bourne Library and we'll be going live in just one minute. At seven o'clock we'll be going live to make giant dahlias that you can use as wall decor or as a wreath. It's, it's seven o'clock so hi I'm Billy at the Gale Bourne Public Library and today we'll be making giant dahlias out of paper that you can use as wall decor, as wreaths. I have one hanging on my front door right now. They're beautiful and easy to make dahlias that you can use as wall decor, set flat on a table. They're beautiful and you can use it with a lot of interesting things. Here's a large one that we'll be making today. We'll be making this large dahlia wreath. It is about 15 inches across you can make them any size that you wish, including this little one that's about eight inches across that I made this morning. Okay, so let's put the camera down and see what we need to get this done. Okay, so to make this craft today, you need four inch sheets of paper. For the large one, you need about 57, but you could need more or less. You need a round piece of paper. This is eight inches across. You can use a piece of cardstock like I have here, or you can use a piece of cardboard or even a paper plate would be great if you had one of those. You'll need a pair of scissors or something to cut your paper with. You'll need a pencil. And I used, also used a compass to cut out and draw the circle for my base and you'll also need hot glue or double-sided tape to tape everything together today. <clears throat> so first thing I did was I cut my circle out of cardstock. I used my compass to draw the outer ring and then I drew a couple inner rings just to give me some guidance when I'm putting my petals down. I also like to take a pencil and mark an X in the center. That helps me give a guide to point all the petals to. Since we all want them to point towards the center, it's good to see where the center is and have something to aim to so we don't go astray. To make our petals, you need a piece of paper that's four by four inches. I have cardstock because I don't have any colored paper here at home with me. So to make it easier to bend the cardstock, I just rubbed it along the side of my table to give it a little curve. That's just gonna help me bend the paper together. I'm also going to curl this now into a cone. So I'm taking my paper on the diagonal and I'm gonna roll it that way. So to help ease it, I'm just going to find the center of the bottom of my cone there to help me fold it over. Since I'm using cardstock, it's just a little easier to help bend it together. And I roughly make a cone that looks like this. So I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm just going to put a, just a dollop of glue very small on the corner. When you're using hot glue, the trick is never to use too much. People love to use the hot glue and it gets all over the place and it gets crazy. So you just wanna use a little hot glue. This is a low temperature hot glue, which is really important because you don't wanna burn yourself through the paper. Let's make one more. Now I'm using cardstock. You won't have to use this step if you're just using regular paper. And I'm doing this just to help curl the paper, holding it down and then pulling it around. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna curl it that way. So I'm gonna find the bottom of my petal and that's just gonna help me curl it over into a cone. I'm just gonna take a little glue down on the edge the little spot of glue and I am going to tack it down so it makes one little cone. 
Now we're going to glue our first layer. What we do is we fold our cone down at the bottom so it's flat. This will make it easier. And I am just going to glue it down like here. You can glue it as wherever you want to start it, but the farther out you start, the bigger it's going to be and the more paper you'll need. So I'm going to glue mine down right here. And to get us going, I have already started my first layer here. So I just need to add two more. So I'm just going to put a dollop of glue at the bottom and go about half an inch away from the other one, pointing to the center. And there you go. I have drawn my circles and that's just to help me stay even when I'm doing my first loop here because I don't want to get too far astray. I use the circles to help me stay together. And there we go. We have our first layer of petals and they're all about a half an inch apart. If it's just a little more like right here, no bothers. Now I have already made all of my petals to smooth it along here. So you don't have to watch me glue 57 cones together. So I'm just gonna take a little glue here and I'm gonna go like an inch to a half an inch. Let's see where it looks nice. I like it right there. So that's where I'm gonna put my next one. And now I'm gonna glue the next one and the next one real close to it, always pointing to the center. I'm not gonna have any more gaps. I'm gonna fold the bottom, glue, and put down. Fold the bottom of my cone, glue a little of it, put it down. Remember I marked where the center was, so I'm gonna make all of my cones point towards the center. I find the easiest way to make sure it all stays together is by turning it and putting them pointing towards me helps me keep it all even. I'm folding the bottom down. No need to be pristine because no one's going to see this part of the flower. They're only going to see the tips. When you're using hot glue, you're going to get little hot glue spider webs. So I pull those off as I see them so that it doesn't get all crazy. And I have to pull a dozen off at the end. Putting it down, pointing it to the center. Now I did not have enough colored cardstock to make a big one all the same color. So I chose to do a little variegated one all in one color. I made one in the pages of an old children's book that I had. Any paper would be fine, but the easiest one to do is just light text-based paper, like from your printer. You can get it in a lot of different colors or from a fancy paper store. You can get just plain colored. Or in the scrapbooking section of Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or your local craft store. Put that down. I like to do crafts like this. Gives me an excuse to watch TV or YouTube videos or listen to a recorded book. And it makes me feel that I'm getting a lot done. And really I'm just relaxing and having a good time making something. This is also a great craft to do with others because you can all work on it together as a group or a family. 
you can do them in fall colors for the fall and spring colors for the spring. I've even made all black ones for Halloween. And I'm just bending down, gluing it. And we're getting to the end. So I'm just gonna find the end here. Sometimes you need to like just save a small one to put at the end. And other ones, you're gonna, just gonna have to wiggle it so it all fits. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will look nice no matter what. Next, I'm gonna go to my next shade of purple and I'm bending it down. The farther I get in, the farther I flatten it. So I find where I want to put it. When I make these, I only make a couple um, petals at a time and then glue them down as I go. That way I know how many petals I'm going to need so I won't have to make any in the end. And it also helps me so it's not so tedious doing one thing over and over again. Making 57 petals at once isn't the most engaging of tasks, but it also helps so your arms don't hurt and you don't get bored. I keep spinning it to help me gauge where to put it. Placing it down doesn't have to be perfect. Just place it where it needs to go. Folding it down the tip. It looks like I need another stick of hot glue. Gluing everything together and getting everything down. I've used about four glue sticks per giant dahlia. There we go, get it in there. Glue this one down. stick in and this is remember it's important to use a cold temperature glue gun when you're working with paper crafts because you don't want to accidentally burn yourself with a hot temperature glue gun they get pretty hot so I like to make sure that I only keep cold temperature glue guns around so I don't make that mistake of burning myself when I'm doing paper crafts. Okay. Now we'll go down to the next level and I have a paler shade of purple here. And I'm gonna, the further I get in, I start to test before I glue and fold so I know how far I need to glue it down. So I'm not having to rip anything up. And as you can see, the farther I get in, the fewer that I need of each color. Push 
pushing it down to where it needs to be. I always like to glue just a line and I always like to glue the item that I'm going to press down. I don't like to put glue down here because you're never 100% sure if you'll have to move something or adjust. So you want to make sure that you're not wasting glue or going to burn yourself if you touch it because you put it down in the wrong place. So it's always handy to glue the thing that you're going to place down, not the thing, not on the object you're gluing to. Okay. And I keep spinning it so that it makes it a nice angle for me to adjust and move around. And there we go. Now I have some white ones that I'm gonna use in the very center. And it looks like it is, I'm starting to glue all the way across. And it looks like in the final one, I'm just gonna to have to fold the petals to make them fit. I'm folding up quite far on the petal now. Moving it up. Gluing it down. Folding it down. And there we go. So now it looks like the last, I can do it white, I can do it my darkest color, you can do whatever you want. So let's experiment with doing it with the darkest color. So what I'm going to have to do is fold my petals in to get them to fit. So I folded it about halfway. So what I'm going to do is put a little glue on the back to glue that petal down and then glue just the tip of it and get that in. So I'm gonna fold it down, find that it's the right height. If the tip, it looks like it's going up too high, I can fold it again and fold, wrap it down on itself putting a little glue in there to hold all of that together and then gluing down the seam at the bottom. I'm going to push this apart so I don't get glue all over the place and glue that in. This looks like this will be the final one. I'm gonna fold it and see if it fits. Tuck that tail, tuck that tail in a little so that it doesn't poke up. Glue that together, run glue down the base, pull all of this apart and shove it down. Manipulating my flower to look how I want it to, pulling a little of the spider webs apart. And there we go. Move the camera just a bit. So look at that, very easy. And in just a few minutes, we made our own beautiful paper dahlia. I can hang it on my front door. I can put it on my table. I can hang it on the wall. It's a beautiful and quick paper craft that you can do with your family. 
Now, I learned about more paper flowers and more paper crafts on Hoopla in the ebook section. Make sure you're checking out our 24 7 e library at gailborden.info to learn about more interesting things that you can do at home during this time. If you have any questions, please ask a librarian. We're still answering questions online via email and through text messages. So make sure that you're asking a librarian if you need help with Hoopla or anything else. Have fun making stuff and make something for somebody and with somebody because it just makes everybody's day go a little brighter. Thank you so much and have a great night.